as many as possible. So you're gonna spam this number seven, press equal. So voila, I'm gonna show you 20 calculator tricks. Let's go. You gotta press the button fraction, eight over five, press on equal. And now you're gonna press this button, right? Changing it to decimal as to D. So that's how you get the decimal 1.6. Press this button again, you will hop back to a fraction. But if you want to see the mixed number, you gotta press shift followed by this button right here. So that's how you change to a mixed number. You're gonna press the fraction button, fill up one over two, press plus. To get the mixed number out, you're gonna press shift followed by this button. And now you can key in your mixed numbers. Press one, two, and followed by three. Solve this by pressing equal. So once again, you will get the improper fraction first, 13 over six. We're gonna press shift followed by this button. So this is how you get the final answer, two, one over six. Now I'm gonna show you the mistakes that the students usually do when I observe them. But in terms of mixed number, they actually press the button wrongly. So they press this normally. They press two over three and they move this cursor to just right beside the fraction and they key in the one as the mixed number. This wouldn't get you the correct answer, typical mistake done by student. So this is where you are getting the wrong answer here. And now you learn how to press correctly. For standard form, press 4,500, press on the button equal. So make sure the calculator has the output 4,500. Now you're gonna press shift followed by this button EMG, right? This button right here. And you will get the standard form to be out. So 4.5 times 10 to the power of three, exactly matching with the answer, okay? But take note, not all the numbers can use this standard form technique. So let's try the second example. Oh, four, five, six, 456,295. Press on the equal button first. Make sure the calculator has the output. Press shift followed by this button E and G, right? So you will notice that not all the numbers gonna get you the final answer, the standard form. So you notice this is actually not standard form because it's less than one. So if I were to press this button again, they will show you different version, but it is still not in standard form. So please take note, it's not all the numbers, you can get the final answer straight away. You can notice that the seven has a dot on top, right? It means that the number seven is repeating itself. So technically it's something like this, 0 0.37777. So it's gonna be repeating itself many, many times. So you wanna get this to a fraction, the skill is the cheat code. You're gonna type the number seven as many as possible. So you're gonna spam this number seven, the one that is recurring, right? And you're gonna press equal. So voila, you're gonna oh. get the answer straight away, 17 over 45. One and nine is repeating and recurring itself. So you're gonna make this number shown like this, one, nine, one, nine, one, nine, and it is recurring. If you just type a few times, you won't probably get the final answer as the fraction, right? The cheat code doesn't work. So all you got to do is make sure you spam the button more. So you're going to click one, nine, one, nine, one, nine, a few more times, as many as possible. Okay. And you will be able to get the fraction out. So 83 over 198. So that's the final answer. To get the product of its prime factors, you're going to press the question 126. You're going to press equal, press on the button shift, followed by this button right here, F-A-C-T, fact. And when I press this, you will notice the answer straight away out, right? So it's going to be two times three squared times seven. So this is how you express a number as a product of its prime factors. Now you can find out the highest common factors from looking at the common factors. So HCF between 20 and 36 is exactly four. Press the first number divided by the second number. You're gonna press equal. So you will notice that they will show you the answer in a fraction, right? So five over nine in this example. Now take 20 dividing by five, right? The first number dividing by the top number. 
and the second number, 36 dividing by 9. Both of them will show the same number. Let me show you. So take 20 dividing by 5. All right, you will notice the answer is 4. You can take the second digit divided by 9. The answer is also going to be 4. So basically, that is telling you the highest common factor, HCF. To get the LCM, you will need to combine with the previous trick just now. So we need to find the HCF first. So once again, teacher going to demonstrate 12 dividing by 9. Take the first number divided by the second number, press equal. So they will show you some sort of like a ratio, 4 over 3. First number, 12 divided by the top number, right? So 12 divided by 4. Let's find the HCF. So we can get the HCF of this question is 3. Let me write it down. Highest common factor between these two numbers is 3. Now, from there, you're going to work on this second trick. So take the question, digit 12 times 9, press equal. So this answer right here, you're going to divide by the HCF just now. So divided by 3. And this will lead you to the LCM. This is the way for you to do LCM. Next skill, all right. So to find the equivalent ratio, for example, like this, 20 become 5. So I think that's a division of 4. Same thing, you're going to take 44 dividing by 4, and that's how you get this answer to be 11. But how to do this on the calculator is something like this. You're going to press mode, find ratio, all right. Press on this button, go inside, press equal. So there'll be two versions. If your blank is on the left-hand side, which is now you're trying to find the blank, the 11 spot, you're going to type 1, where X is the unknown that you're trying to find. So type number 1, key in your question. So 44 equal 20, press on the button equal. Now on the right-hand side, it's given to be 5. And voila, you just got to press equal all the way and they will show you the missing spot on the left is actually 11. Now what happened if you do this kind of question? So you will have the missing spot on the right-hand side, right? So same thing. You're going to press mode, go to this function, ratio. If your blank is on the right, look for X, which is on the right. So now it's going to be option two. Key in whatever things that you need. So 24, press on the button equal, 56 equal. Now on the left-hand side, it's given to be three. So key in three. And now press on the button equal, they will show you the answer that is needed is actually 7. So let's check this. Is it really true? 24 becoming 3, that's a division of 8. So 56 divided by 8 is indeed 7. So this is how you get the answer from calculator. Writing ratios in the form of 1 is to n where the left-hand side is have to be number one no matter what, right? So you're going to make the left-hand side ratio as one no matter what. So how does two become one? You're going to divide by two. That's how you get one. Eight divided by two, that's going to be four, right? Now, the second answer for question B over here, six, how to become one? That's division of six. So getting one. Four also will need to divide by six. And that is how you get this to be four over six simplify and you will get this to be two over three right now to do this you're gonna go for ratio again you're gonna make sure you go for option two so click on option two key in your question so two equal it equal now you want the left hand side to be one right so key in one and they will tell you what is supposedly the right-hand side value. So the missing value is going to be 4, right? See, this is absolutely correct. Once again, Another you go for one. the ratio function. Click on number 2. Now, key in your question. So this is going to be 6. This is 4. Um, right-hand side, I want to know. So left-hand side, make it as 1. Press on equal and voila, bam. So you get the right-hand side n value to be 2 over 3. So if you want to change decimal to fraction and percentage, you just key in 0 0.2. 
press on the button equal. So they will show you the fraction one over five. And if you want to change it into percent, all you got to do is just multiply by 100, isn't it? So this is how you know it's going to be 20%. So fill up. This is going to be 1 over 5, and this is going to be 20%. Now, if you want to work your way the other round, so from percent, get me the fraction and also the decimal, very easy. So you key in 25 to get the percent symbol. Press shift, followed by this button. Press on the equal button. So you will see it's actually 1 over 4. So now you know the fraction. And then if you want to get decimal, you're just going to press this button again, S to D. So it's 0 0.25, okay? So this is 0 0.25, and this is 1 over 4. So all you got to do is press on the fraction first, press equal. So again, press S to D. So you will now get it into the decimal format, 0 0.875. If you want this to be in percentage, you just have to times 100%. So 87.5, okay? That's how you get 87.5, 0 0.875. So now you know how to do. Whenever you want to buy something or you want to go for shopping, find 15% of $500, how to do. So you're going to press 15, get the percentage symbol out, shift followed by this button, ANS. So now you have the 15% out, multiply whenever you see the word off, and key in 500. So this is how you know the final answer. So it's actually $75. Two hours, 40 minutes, minus off with the 56 minutes over there. So looking at the situation, 40 minutes cannot minus the bigger value of 56 minutes. So you got to borrow from here, borrow one hour. So two become one. 40 minutes have now extra 60 minutes because one hour has been borrowed and converted to minutes, right? So now you have 100 minutes as a whole, you can now minus off with 56. So the remainder is 44. And now this remainder for hour is gonna be one. So my answer is one hour, 44 minutes. Okay, remember this button is actually for time, all right? So let's begin. Two hour, 40 minutes. This is how you show minus now the other second number over here they don't have hours so you have to press zero first zero hour 56 minutes so this is how you type press equal and you will notice that the answers are in three different timing right so one hour 45 minutes and zero seconds so this is how you read the calculator answer and voila exactly the same as the answer just now let me show you another time 30 minutes 5 second plus with a 23 minutes 40 second this is going to be 45 53 minutes isn't it so my answer is 53 minutes and 45 seconds remember we don't have hour so we have to put zero first zero hour 30 minutes five seconds plus we don't have hour so you have to press zero first zero hour 23 minutes 40 seconds. Press on the button equal and you will have the final answer. So the final answer always show you in three different timing. We have zero hour, 53 minutes and 45 seconds. Bam. Okay. So that's how you do this question over here. Go for simultaneous. You need to find this equation slash function. All right. Find this. Go equal. So they will get you to input number one, simultaneous equation, key in one. How many unknowns do you have? We only have unknown X and unknown Y. So there's only two unknowns, press two. Now you will get the exact format X, Y, and then follow the number over there. So key in three. First equation, there's a minus two for Y. So key in minus two, 19 as the digit value. Second equation, x is 1, y is 1, and the value over there is given to be a positive 3. So you're just going to fit in, and voila, bam, you have the answer straight away. x is 5, and y is negative 2. So you log in immediately, x is 5, and y is negative 2. So at least you get some sort of marks, right? Now, I'm still trying to find ways to get the calculator for this kind of question. Your equation one is linear, where your second equation is actually quadratic. Quadratic means power of two. 
Similarly, like this, you will notice quadratic on the second equation. So if you know how to press the calculator for this kind of simultaneous equation, do comment below. I really want to know how to get this answer straight away. All right. Until today, I have no way to get this done on the calculator. All right. Let me know. To do factorization of quadratic expressions, go to equation slash function, right? I'll go for number two, polynomial. Quadratic is power of two, so you key in degree two. First question A, in front of x squared is just one. In front of x is positive four. And the digit over there is given to be a three, so fit in. And you will notice the calculator showing you x1 is negative one. So quickly write x1 is negative 1 and get the second answer, x2 is negative 3. So you can use a pencil to write it down at the side of your question paper. Purposely write x, x so that you can get x squared. Now, if you see negative 1, right, you purposely write as plus 1. If you see negative 3, you purposely write plus 3. Now, another in. one x square is 1 and b now x is negative 5 and the last digit over there is negative 6 so fit in the calculator okay x1 is positive 6 write it down x1 is positive 6 x2 it's a negative 1 write it down at the corner now that you are ready it's a double bracket factorization so write x in front so that you get x square positive six purposely write as minus six negative one purposely write as a plus one so this is how you do factorizing using calculator how to solve the quadratic equations given whether i need to use factorization technique or i need to use quadratic formula technique right watch how i do go we'll find the equation slash function Go for polynomial because we are solving a polynomial. Degree is 2 for quadratic, power of 2. All right, for question A, you key in exactly the question. So x squared in front there is 1. For the B value, it's a minus 5. For C value, it's a minus 14. All right, once you're done, you can notice x1 is a positive 7 x2 it's a negative 2 so these kind of things are telling you whole numbers integers this is going to be double bracket factorization technique so i knew question a is solved by factorization double bracket all right so i knew the technique to solve this for question b let's look at this imagine you get this in your question paper quadratic equation you might think is factorization but the calculator tells you something else let's look at this same skill you prompt int your x square is one your b value is a positive nine your c value is a minus 12. now calculator tells you it's a it's a complex number you can see it's not an integer it's not a beautiful whole number so you knew the technique to solve this question is not double bracket factorization, but rather quadratic formula. So I can know question two is solved by quadratic formula. All right. So now A is three. B value, it's a minus five. C value, it's a positive two. So you can see X1 is a positive one x2 it's a fraction 2 over 3 it doesn't matter it's not a complex number so i knew the way to solve this is again double bracket factorization solve it by using factorization so this skill is super underrated try and learn how I use calculator to get the working all done. I'm gonna press on mode, go for the equation slash function, polynomial, so press two, degree is two, power of two, fit in your ABC value, so X square is one, your B value, it's a minus five, your C value, it's a minus 14, 
Now you're gonna use pencil and write at your question paper. X one is positive seven. Okay, and your x two it's a minus two. So you write using pencil. From calculator, I knew the two values are whole numbers or integers. So you knew it's solved by factorization. Immediately, you're gonna write double bracket equals to zero. Don't forget. So if you see positive seven, purposely write as minus seven. If you see a minus two, purposely write as plus two. So that's the technique. If you want to get x squared, definitely you're going to fill up x at the front. So how to show examiner the full working, right? Grab the first bracket equals to zero. So x minus seven equals to zero. Then you're going to shift this towards the other side. That's how you get the answer to be positive seven, matching with this. Grab the second bracket, x plus two equals to zero. Shift this plus two, solve for x. That's how you get minus two. So now you get it. Why the calculator's answer will have to be reversed for the symbol, right? When you want to solve the equation. So this is how you do it. I predict the step first, followed by the working. Fit in your polynomial, degree two, press on two, fill up your ABC value. So A is one, B is positive nine, C is a minus twelve. Press on the button equal. So you realize x1 is a complex number. It's not like the normal integer. x2 is also not like the normal integer that you usually see. So this one you cannot solve by factorization. You need to solve by quadratic formula. All right. So quickly write the quadratic formula out. So the world famous formula x is negative b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac over. 2a. So this is your world famous quadratic formula. Negative, what is your b value? 9. So use bracket. A lot of students make mistake here. Okay, plus minus, copy back. Square root. b square, b is 9. So 9 square minus trace 4 trace. a value is right here, 1. c value is a minus 12. Careful, minus 12. Make sure the house is longer for everyone. Dividing by 2a. A value is 1, remember. So key in 1 here. All right, now you're going to show the working to the examiner, negative 9 plus minus. Settle this using the calculator. So exit this right now. All right, press on the button, square root. Follow exactly the same. So 9 square minus 4 bracket 1, bracket again minus 12, close, press equal, copy this as square root 129 because we need to show working in maths, copy this, dividing by 2 at the bottom. So this is exactly what is shown in the calculator just now, isn't it, right? See this? How to settle the plus minus in the calculator, right? Actually, you need to type twice. All right, so I will do plus first. So negative nine plus square root 129. Press on the button equal first, followed by dividing by two. So you can press this button as to D and you will need to round to two decimal places most of the time in the question paper. So this is rounded to 1.18. That's the first answer. Now for the second answer, you need to work on minus, right? So you have to key in again another time. So negative nine minus square root one, two, nine. Press on the button equal first, followed by division of two. Now they will get you the complex numbers again, press S to D. So round to two decimal places, negative 10.18, right? Negative 10.18. So this is how you press a uh, calculator for quadratic equation. Now for expanding triple brackets, the question exam can be like four marks to five marks. So it's huge. One way I can use the calculator is to check my final answer. Let's say I already solved this question and my final answer is this. So I will need the calculator's help to get me the checking. That I don't want to lose five marks or, or whatever marks that is given in the question paper. I'm going to press mode followed by this, you know, this function, equation slash function, press on equal, 
this is polynomial. Our degree right here is 3. I want to check my final answer, remember. So the degree is 3, power of 3. Fit in all your values. So 2 for the first one. Second one is negative 7. Third one is positive 1. And the last digit over there is a positive 10. Fit in the calculator. So write down your answers of your checking, right, with a pencil. X1 is negative 1. So write like this on your question paper using pencil. X2 is 5 over 2. Everything you can now use to check with a calculator. And finally, X3 is a positive 2. If you listen closely to my previous technique just now, right, you can know. Negative 1 purposely write as positive 1 in the bracket. Is it true? Yes. So this is the first one. Done. This number is 4 at the back. Bottom number denominator is for the front. Positive purposely write negative in the bracket. So this is matching with the second x2. Now, if you see positive 2, remember you have to write in the bracket as a minus 2. So this one is matching with this. So I knew after all my effort of solving this question, my final answer is absolutely correct. So this is again another underrated skill. I am now safely holding the five marks for this question. Before you plot any graph, you're supposed to fill up the table of values. Two ways to fill up the table. You're going to use the CALC button. Or number two, you can use the table function in the calculator itself. Now, I want you to key in the equation shown to you. For example, this question is 3 over 10. X cubed. How to get the X out is you're going to see this red color X over there. So you need to press alpha followed by this button. Then you will get the x algebra unknown out. Cube, you can key in like this, minus 2x alpha followed by this button right here. All right. So I have the equation ready, exactly matching with the question paper. Now press this button, C-A-L-C, to calculate. Now they will trigger you the prompt of what is your x value. Key in, negative 3 press equal right so you can see again this is now in improper fraction press s to d and you will notice this is the answer negative 2.1 so key in negative 2.1 for the first value now i want to fill for negative 2 don't press any button just yet press c a l c trigger the input again i want to put negative 2 so key in negative 2 press equal. So again, you can change this formatting to decimal 1.6. Once again, press the button CALC, calculate. I want to fill up the table for one. Just press equal and you will get this to be negative 1.7. So fill up, negative one point. Most there, last value to fill up is positive three CALC. Don't touch anything else. Type positive three. And you will change this to decimal, so 2.1. That's how you fill up this table of values. The second way is to use the table function. So let's go for mode. Find the table function. Yes, this one, all right? Number nine, go inside. They will prompt you for the function fx. Basically, it's a y equation. So key in the algebra properly again. So this is 3 over 10. Key in the equation properly. If I want to get x out, press alpha, followed by this. Cube minus 2x, minus 2, followed by another time of x. Now, once you're happy matching with the equation in the question, press equal. They ask you what is another function gx. We don't have, don't press any function. Just continue pressing equal. All right, what is the starting value? Starting value that we have right here is negative 3. And the ending value is this positive 3, right? So key in, starting value negative 3, press equal. Ending value that we want is a positive 3. What is the meaning of step? Your increment from one point to another. Let's say negative 3 to negative 2, the step is plus 1. Negative 2 to negative 1.5, the step is 0 0.5. Knowing that there are 0 0.5 for the steps, I better change this to 0 
now that I'm ready, press equal. So they will show you all the values one shot, right? So this is the way. Negative 3, I will need to fill up for negative 2.1 slowly. Negative uh, 2.5, we are not filling up. We are filling up for negative 2. So negative 2, you're going to fill up 1.6. Positive 1, you're going to fill up as negative 1.7. And lastly, I'm going to fill up the value for positive 3. So positive 3, I will need to fill up the y value as 2.1. So is it exactly the same as the CALC button function just now? Let's try to look at it. I think it's going to be exactly the same. Yeah, exactly the same. But obviously, I will prefer using the table method, isn't it? I think it's so much better. comes to sketching trigonometric graphs, whether it's a sine graph or sine graph or tangent graph, you can also use the calculator to give you the table of values. The table function, number nine. fx is sine x. Remember, your function here is sine x. So you're just going to press sine followed by x. Press alpha, close the bracket, press equal. We don't have another function, so leave it. I want you press equal. Okay, now for the starting value for trigonometry graphs, I want you to start with zero and with 360 because that's your degree. Take note on your calculator, make sure the degree button is set to degree, right? D, there is a D at the top of the calculator screen to tell you all the angles are set to degree, not radian, all right? Remember this. Now, what is the step that you want for a good trigonometry graphs is 30. Every 30 degree, we try to get the table of values out. All right, so try to take note on certain numbers. 90 degree, there will be a one. You can set this to 90, 180, this is 270. And finally, 360 is given and labeled over there. I think we can divide nicely, just roughly. Plot your table of values, right? So 90 degree is going to be 1. So roughly here. Roughly. <laughs> okay, Um, the next one, it's a 180. So 180 is at 0. All right, next. At 270, it's at negative 1. So at 270, negative 1 here. 360, it's at 0, right? So this is how you plot like this. Now, don't forget the value at 0. I forget to show. At 0, the function is also 0. So you plot all the major points first. Now you can plot your curve, right? So roughly, yeah, this is sketch. <laughs> it's a bit hard because it's sketch, right? I'm trying my very best. Here I need to turn already, so make sure you turn. And now right. Okay, so this is how you use calculator to sketch a trigonometric graph. You can also use calculator to solve vectors. So let's learn the manual calculation first so that you can see what's going on later. V minus Y, so vector V minus vector Y. Write the bracket, negative 1, 3, column vector minus with a 2 and 5. Okay, now top minus top. So negative 1 minus 2. That is how I knew the answer is negative 3 here. 3 minus 5, all right? Bottom minus bottom. So that will be minus 2. So that's my answer for the first one. If you see 2v, that means 2 times of your vector v. So 2, copy the column vector, negative 1, 3. How to do multiply, right? 2 times top, so that will be negative 2. 2 times bottom value, that is going to be a positive 6. Now, I'm going to use calculator to prove whether the answers are exactly true or not. All right, so for vectors, right, you're going to press mode and find vector. The, all right, so vector is number five, it seems. Press equal. Now, you will be prompted to define your vector A, B, C, D. So it seems that you can only define four vectors. Right here, we only have two, right? So let's call vector A as the one for V. 
press number one. We want to define vector V first, right? Number one. Okay, dimension, you press two. Dimension, you press two. So you will see exactly the same format. Fit in negative one. The bottom number is a positive three. Okay, press this equal. So you teach the calculator your vector A is negative one, three. Now press option and you will need to continue to define another vector, right? You want to define vector Y, press number one. Now our vector Y, we call it vector B. So press number two, dimension two. Teach the calculator vector Y is two, press equal, bottom number is five, press equal. Now that you have taught your calculator the vector V and Y, go back and press option. So I want to do some calculation now. Press number three, vector calculate. Now, I want the first vector minus with the second vector for this question, isn't it? So how do you call out the vector? You press uh, option. You press number three for vector A. Okay, minus. You want to call the calculator for vector B, you press option and press number four to call vector B. So now you will get the calculator to do the calculation for you, V minus Y, press equal. So you will have the answer negative three, negative two, which is matching with this. So that's how you get the calculator to check your answer or solve it for you. I want to do question B two times of vector V. So you can press option, call out vector A because our vector A was representing vector V just now, right? So our first vector is in A, call it out, press number three. I want two times two, just type times two, press equal. Get the answer for the question B, negative two, positive six, exactly matching with the manual calculation just now. So you knew confidently that's the answer. So this is how you solve factor questions. Hey, if you really like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more mathematics tips and tricks. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.